Nice. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact as a uh, as a VOD, hi, my name is Ashley, and I basically just stream some sketch sculpting, um, kind of like concept sculpting, just having fun and going with the flow of it. I'm, <laughs> as I said to one of my friends earlier today, um, I'm more of the Bob Ross type, but like with more anxiety and chaos. <laughs> less chill <laughs> so just kind of do whatever whatever happens happens happy little accidents you know that sort of thing um professionally i work as a vis dev artist slash character designer and uh character artist so that's sort of like my specialty is characters and creatures and things like that so um if you have questions regarding that feel free to ask otherwise i'm just gonna be doing whatever and talking and having fun during this um yeah it's just it's just gonna be a sketch session so if that's your thing it's four hours long buckle in have fun whatever <laughs> hi tattoon how are you hi riarth hi creative how are you guys doing i have not been streaming here for a little bit i mean i did that thing with ian um the spotlight stream so you could kind of see like you know what i i do professionally a little bit more as opposed to like the sketching, um, the sketching streams, but I haven't really like done a uh, a sketch stream for a little bit now. So let's shake some uh, let's shake some rust off. I don't really know what I'm gonna do. I might default. I you know what? Honestly, something that's kind of cool is uh, the art station challenge has been going on which is the dragon thing, and I didn't really get to take part in that, which kind of makes me sad, but I've just been like really, really busy. So I'm wondering if maybe I can do, I don't know. I can, I can go into the comfort zone, you know? Might be fun. Always put back face masking on. Let me see. Back face masking on your clay buildup helps a lot so that you can not worry about working on small, crunchy, crunchy bits, you know? Actually, I can do more of like that. And... Kind of dinosaur-like. So a lot of the time when I'm doing like these sketch things too, you'll notice I love masking things and pulling them around, especially when I'm in the early stages of like just figuring out what it is that I'm doing. So here we need more cranium, so I'm gonna just adjust that. Hey drummer, what's up? Yeah, monster time. Monster time! I'm gonna be real with you, I have not sketched a monster for like a month now which is a sad thing but that's what happens when that's what happens when you get busy so happy to be here doing that and yeah i don't really care about like all of the nasty geometry and stuff like that we need more back of the skull back of the skull because like I'm just going to Dynamesh anyways. Right now I'm just sort of figuring out if there's a any kind of a cool shape to the stuff that I'm doing, which I kind of want this to be a lot skinnier. Tessimate and Dynamesh, um, Tessimate, I, you know what's crazy is I don't know the huge difference. Do I still have that stuff up here? No, I think I removed it. So one thing, if you are really confused about something, there is a way to understand it better. If you hold control and you hover over something, you can understand like a little bit better of like, you know, based on the description that you get, like what that tool does. So. Here we've got Tessimate, which says when you press the Tessimate button, it will tessellate and decimate the selected subtool. The Tessimate will respect masking for local tessellation and decimation. So it's not quite the same as Dynamesh, where you're adding 
geometry um, in that sense, right? So G Dynamesh says, when you Dynamesh, uh, it will provide sculptural geometry to any mesh without stretching or constraints. Constraints. It will give you the freedom to continue sculpting without having to worry about your underlying geometry, and then you can read Dynamesh, etc. Um, so I don't know exactly the, uh, I guess, technical way to describe the difference here, but when you're sculpting things, personally, like, I find it's best to just use Dynamesh when, I mean, like, I, I, I've been using that forever, and it gives you more topology based on, um, based on, like, the geometry that you already have going there. It will just try to add more in a uh, sort of like tessellated sort of way, except tessimate is more of like, I guess, like the decimated, decimation sort of uh, route, which I guess like if you take that off as well, um, tessellate itself will be something a little bit different. Like the technicalities of it, I'm not an expert on, <laughs> but I don't really use that. So if you if you are interested in that, I'm sure somebody like Ian would be able to help you with the exact like d difference there. Hello, how are you, Mibiru? Or Mubiru, sorry. Hi, Pro. Haven't ZBrushed in ages? Oh. I mean, you could always, like, uh, unless, unless you aren't paying for it, in which case. But you could always just get a month of it, I don't know. <laughs> You take part in art station challenges. I don't have time. Um, when I had more time, when I was like a junior artist and stuff, yeah, I did. But uh, these days, like, I really don't have time for that. I wish I did. That's like a thing, right? Like, um, Inktober is coming up. I mean, people are already doing like sketch timber and stuff. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna have time for that. I have too many deadlines coming up. Um, but maybe in October, I'll have like no work. Because I really kind of hope so, even though that means, like, no money for me. <laughs> I kind of hope that I don't, though, because then I can finally do Inktober from start to finish. I have never been able to do it from start to finish because I keep getting busy. And I really like Inktober. This time of year, I always get so hype, you know? Like, I don't know if it's, like, residual sort of uh, feeling like I'm going to be starting a new semester at school and I'm an adult now, you know, like, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm always just like, yes, this is the actual new year, you know, like New Year's comes and goes for me. I don't care. It's in the middle of winter time, really. Who's making any changes then? It's the fall, the transition, the transition from summertime into the fall is when I just feel the most alive. I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to make changes in my life. Things are going to happen. There's no other transition time for me. It's like everything everything's dying and I'm like I am I'm an I'm getting life from all of these things dying. <laughs> I speak so I know I'm sorry. I'm a little bit like hyper today. I have like hyper days and I have like low days as well. So today's a hyper day. I might chill out. We'll see. <laughs> Junior artists, well, that really depends on where you're working. You know, if you're being abused by your company and make to work like 70 hour work weeks or something, then of course you're not going to have very much time. Um, I didn't have, I mean, there was quite a large period of time where I uh, was in that 60 hour a week, like grind with work, which really sucked. But I find in general, um, working at studio, I had way more personal time than I do as a freelance artist. As a freelance artist, I feel like I'm just constantly doing stuff, you know? So that's the difference, is when I was a junior artist, um, I was not freelance.
start with ZBrush being slow for you, having saving and quick saving. You also soured on ZBrush a lot since they take over by Maxon. I mean, I understand that. For me, though, like it's still a tool to use that is very fun to use. So whoever owns it, to me, I don't like if you have the perpetual license already. I mean, yeah, you won't be getting like updates in the future unless you pay. Right. But you still have this version of it and this version to me. It's just like it's fine. I mean, I think it's going to last a long time. Really, let's uh get a more interesting head shape here i kind of want to do like like more of like a full Turn my phone off. How oh, unprofessional of me. <clears throat> Get some eyeballs in. We doing dinos? It's like a, a dino dragon type thing, yeah. I feel like I never do like strictly like dinos just because the paleo community is so intense and I will never be as scientifically accurate with any of the dinos that I do ever. So um, actually it's a make-believe creature. Don't worry, we're not doing a dinosaur. <laughs> there was a free hole in the wall here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shadow. What did you say? I'm sorry. What? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm feeling a lot better, as you can tell. Um, I had COVID for uh, over a week, but I am feeling much better. It's annoying too, because like I'm so careful about it, right? Like I don't want it, but because of how contagious the damn thing is, even with all my precautions, still get it. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to get COVID multiple times though, for sure. Stay safe. It's not gone. Blah blah blah. When I'm making a dino, all I'm thinking is hee hee big teeth, <laughs> teethy big lizard, right? But the paleo community though. Have you considered? <laughs> All right, thicker neck. Actually, we'll just do it like this. I wanna make this uh, a little bit longer too. Yeah, you're visible. What's up, Tatoon? Did you ask something earlier? Any tips on cavity mapping? Um. Okay, so the best thing that I can say, uh, some uh, a tip, actually that you might not know of is you can actually create different kinds of like maps within zbrush with poly paint i know that sounds kind of like nuts but think of it like okay well if you're dealing with just like grayscale or black and white you can use masking turn that mask into poly paint data export that poly paint data as like you know your ao or your cavities right because in masking right down here you can actually use this like mask by cavity right like and this is not exactly a great um thing to kind of jump off of it's a really like crappy start of like a whatever sculpt but you can mask by cavity right like let's say that was your cavity and then with this you can fill object with uh with like black right invert it fill object with white and then if you had if you had like your uvs then all you would need to do from this 
is go to your um where is it texture map and then you do a new texture like create from poly paint i don't have uvs on this but if you had uvs you could say create from poly paint well now now you have a basic cavity um you know Thing to go off of if you put that into substance you can start working off of it there uh anything like if you want a more accurate cavity map or anything like that you know you can bake it in substance but if you wanted to do stuff in zbrush using poly paint and the masking tools is actually like a fun way to kind of go around that as well hopefully that helps yes it has been a while john I know. Um, there was a stream. I'll get back to the sculpting in a second. There was a stream that uh, I did with Ian. If you're interested, oh, so ah. yeah. So this one, uh, I did. I did this stream uh, with Ian right here, the uh, industry spotlight, which was pretty cool. Um, it's a lot different than the stuff that I do on uh, on these streams usually because this is like me going over all of, like the sort of like stylized stuff um, that I that I do for work, right? So if you're interested in that, you know, it's only mildly cringe on my behalf. You can check that out. But otherwise, yeah, I've uh, I have not been streaming here in a little bit. I've been pretty busy. Here, I'll get you the link to. Here you go. Put that in chat. Here you go. I right, cringe. I mean, it, it's not like it's not like the funny kind. It's not like haha funny. It's like haha weird, you know. <laughs> but people say that they liked it, and I think that that's all that matters. Is if some people found it helpful, then that's all I'm doing it for. Lord knows I don't get paid. <laughs> Not for this. We just here to have fun and help if I can. It's almost weird seeing, yeah, from non-human, like, non-human creatures yeah and monsters is no it's not offensive like i never do that kind of stuff on stream so why would people and it's also not really in my portfolio that much which is like <laughs> that's why i tell people like don't come to me for portfolio advice because i'm probably the worst person to get because i get work based on something that is like a hundred like 180 degrees from what i have in my portfolio so i you know, it's very confusing. Like, navigating all of this is very confusing for me. I can give you general advice and what I've heard from other people, but my own experience is sort of like... I think also, like, there's a lot of privilege that comes in in terms of, like, uh, my situation, too. Like, I'm very lucky in a lot of cases. So when it comes to, like, giving, like, solid advice that absolutely will get you a job and stuff like that, I cannot offer that. <laughs> hmm. Sure, 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 sure. One sec. One second. Here we go. What's up, Scott? What's up, bad? Thanks, Leonard. Yeah, it was, it was fun to show it, too. Um, I kind of wish that, like, I could go in a little bit longer, a little bit more in depth, but I was, like, really nervous, too, so... Got a taste of it. I think that's good enough. Maybe one day I'll do some stylized stuff on stream. I don't know. It's just one of those things, right? Like, this is, like, doing this kind of work, like, just sketching dragons and monsters and weird creatures and stuff like that is sort of, like, it's a passion. Like, I really like doing that at my core. Like, that's, like, artistically, like, I love it. I'm not saying that I don't love um, stylized stuff as well. It's just, in general, because I'm doing that for work all the time, it's really nice to not do it. And it also helps to keep your 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 mind, I guess your your eye fresh, you know. He he looks kind of like like head on. He looks kind of like um this dude looks a little bit like uh those gray not the greyhounds yeah the greyhound greyhound I like those greyhound dogs with the long snout or whatever. Are they the greyhound? They're greyhounds, right?
I think I'm gonna try and go for something a little bit more striking right here instead of like I'm gonna move this up too. I don't like this being so. I'm gonna go with a pretty round upper silhouette, I think. Kind of fun. This on the side. I might wanna make these come out more. Here. We're gonna make this little on the the bird side. Stronger jaw. What's up, code? Yo, Ian! How you doing? How's that voice? Ian's a sick dude, too. Both artistically and uh, physically right now. <laughs> Do you ever use Lazy Nizumi? No, but Tomas does. Tomas loves Lazy Tomas's entire career is based off of Lazy Nizumi. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> He'd hate me if I said that. See you, Ray Earth. Uh... All right, now I want stronger silhouette. I don't like this. Let's do... Woo! <laughs> no, I don't have proper topology for that. So used to doing that now. Like if you okay, so if you want to like mask something in a in a direction, you can literally take your gizmo. This is something that I do all the time, especially when I uh, when I have like a whole bunch of sub tools like kind of put into one thing, or if I'm doing pose work in T Pose Master and everything's all together on like the same um, like it's all together in the same I guess sub tool while you're working with sub tool uh, Transpose Master, which is in here. If you're working with transpose master too like you know you're gonna want to select individual bits and usually what i'll do is i'll just take the uh the gizmo i'll hold control and then if you just kind of work around depending on how your topology is you can mask in a direction based on the topology it will follow the topological flow wherever you you click down with control you can see that right so this is very very useful for me when i'm using like when i'm doing pose stuff um, and I just kind of like am in a habit now too. Like if everything's kind of together, if I were to, for example, merge visible. And so now everything here is in one, um, it's just in one sub tool. But you take the, uh, the transpose and then you just kind of like um, shake it over. Then you'll have just that one selected. You can also just like individually like hide and then do that. But I find like when I'm going really fast, I like to just kind of, do this sort of a thing and then it's just it's selected or this and then i'll just kind of like shake it off and then now this is selected or shake this off now this is selected you know what i mean so it makes it really quick sort of in that that regard and then otherwise i'll have my uh my lasso and then i'll just kind of do that and <laughs> so i'll just work with masks that way uh back to this though 
very bassy yeah you've got that rasp going yeah i lost my i lost my voice too when i had covid it was um but the thing is like i wasn't really even coughing so it's kind of crazy that my voice was just like yeah see ya bye <laughs> How did I start my career? Um, with a lot of rejection. Uh, so when I was in, like I went to school for animation and uh, in third year of animation, we were supposed to get a internship, but for um, reasons that make a lot more sense now that didn't really make sense to me back then is I like my portfolio was really weak and i was just like really weak in general for like an internship like nobody could tell what was going on in my my portfolio or anything so i couldn't get an internship i must have applied to maybe a hundred up to a hundred different like applications just like sh like shotgunning it you know um and that made me pretty sad because i kind of just had to not like my whole class everybody had internships but i i didn't right and that was kind of like a big oof uh moment for me and so because i couldn't get an internship when fourth year came around and we were doing our own films which i pretty much like slacked off on that's my own problem um but i didn't take it seriously enough so i kind of crammed the entire thing at the very end uh and ended up um doing the screening i mean i passed it wasn't with flying colors or anything but i passed and there's an industry event at our at the school that i went to and i kind of just went like ham on it you know like i was just trying real hard to get in as many people's faces and being like i'll do whatever um i really want to be a 3d artist you know i want to be a character artist but in my portfolio it was kind of weak and out of luck the company arc was doing mass hirings and they really needed somebody who knew zbrush and i just happened to be there at the right time i did not know very much about proper modeling i did not know very much about proper topology um what goes into a production even because again i was in a 2d animation program so a lot of my 3d knowledge was self-taught including zbrush so at that point i just kind of got lucky uh and they reached out to me after the industry event and after i like sent them lots and lots of emails um for an interview and i ended up crying after that interview i remember because one of the people that interviewed me was like they were playing like good cop bad cop or something it was very odd uh and i remember crying after that interview thinking i, I bombed it like there's no way and then getting a call then like on my way back um home being like hey yeah uh here's your salary or whatever do you accept we'll send you the paperwork and i was just like this roller coaster of emotion is ridiculous but i got really lucky because i was in the right place at the right time um, and it all happened very, very quickly. And so then I was working at ARC and that was like a crazy experience as well, just because that, that whole company, my first job too, like it ended up going under, um, so mass layoff, like not even layoff, but like everybody was just like out of work because the company just closed its doors one morning. It was like, you can't come and get anything. Uh, so then that happened the, uh, the week where... <laughs> We all just were on like this networking spree. I know this is a very like candid kind of uh, talk, but we were all sort of like when ARC went under, I was working there for maybe a year at that point and it went under um, as a character artist and everything just kind of, like everybody was just kind of like on a networking like frenzy because all of Toronto at that time, uh, the industry were just like, oh, we'll help out because it was like a 500 plus company that just went under, right? And so like, that was a lot of people displaced for work. So there was like tons of industry events and it was basically like a week long bender for a lot of us. <laughs> and that's how I got my second job. <laughs> so it's very unconventional. It's very social. Um, things, times are definitely a little bit different now than they were even just like those five years ago, right? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I do recognize though that I was very, very, uh, lucky in the situations that I am. A lot of, a lot of getting a job in this industry though is being in the right place at the right time and talking to the right people. 
So it's it's pretty tricky and everybody's story is different. There is no like yeah, you'll definitely get a job if you do this. Like it's not it's it's not really like as corporate, you know? Actually, I don't want that. But that second job and that um, allowed me after a year working there, I was allowed to finish up my um, finish up working for them uh, at, from Tangent at home. I was doing surfacing work at home in Quebec, like a province over. Uh, they allowed me to do that, which was super awesome. But that in itself kickstarted um, it kickstarted my freelance career, right? Because I was already working from home for Tangent way back then and then I started my freelance career I had a few clients from um, word of mouth that I had already met in previous jobs like different directors and things that trusted my work which was again very lucky I'm very lucky um, and then that sort of snowballed and then the pandemic hit and everybody was working from home which just made freelance that much easier because now I don't have to explain yeah you can trust me working at home because now everybody's doing it right so, and now I'm still a freelancer and I'm got a bunch of things under, under my belt, which is uh, pretty great. But I think the big thing that does play into it though, like I know I, I, I am very lucky, um, but constantly doing work that I was interested in really did help a lot of that as well. Trying to figure out what I want to do here. I think I'm gonna do some sort of like a Weavern. A Wyvern. Is it Weavern? Wyvern? Wyvern or Weavern? Which one do you say? But yeah, like when I when I got my job, I was pretty uh my first job, I was not I was not very good. I was just lucky. Wyvern? I heard Weavern. Maybe. Yeah, because it is. A lot of it is luck. And it's it's a hard thing to swallow like it is a hard pill to swallow like you want you really do want it to be like this sort of like okay i go to school i get my degree that means now i'll get a job but it's not the case especially not with art a lot of people too you don't need to go to school as long as like you're you're you have a clear artistic vision that will definitely help you a lot in my case i was just very very social as well and i just kind of did like i persisted right like, the more opportunities that you put yourself in to be lucky, the greater chance you will be to be lucky. If you put yourself, if you never put yourself in any situation to be lucky, then how do you expect to get lucky? You know what I mean? Um, like, and I'm not the type of person, too, to say that you need to be on, like, this grind because I find that nonsensical. You absolutely need to do things that you like to do. And it might be frustrating to hear this, but the more of what you do, like the more you do what you like to do, the more you will, you know, attract other things like other people that like your talent in that regard. And you have a greater chance of getting a job in that field. As long as you're putting yourself in those positions in order to get the work as well. Like, you know, it's super annoying because a lot of artists like they're not super social right a lot of the time i hermit too um but networking is such a massive part of being in the animation game and film industry that if you don't do it you uh unfortunately you'll be left by the wayside and also like as hard as it is to artists really need to advocate for themselves um otherwise a lot of money people will try to take advantage they will not a lot of people um running project productions for example like they do not understand you know because they themselves might not be artists um they don't understand how long something might actually take so if you're lying about how long something takes 
and they just keep seeing like, oh, you like, you know, you just spent eight hours on this thing. But in reality, you spent 16. You just said it was eight. They will go off of, well, you got it done, right? You got it done in that time. They have no idea. And you'll just be hurting yourself. You really got to like advocate for what is possible. What can you do? Spanish. No, I'm so sorry. I don't, I do not know Spanish. I apologize. Freelance versus salary employee. What's the better, what's better? What was better for your time for career growth? Honestly, I see this is where I really fall short because I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I like to do and I guess I've been lucky all the way up until this point. I know it's hard for a lot of people, but I'm just doing what I like to do. And so when it came to, it, it comes down to like who you are as a person as well. Because when I was in studio, it was driving me a little bit crazy. Not gonna lie. Like I could go back to, to a studio to work, but I feel like I would need more creative input at this point in order to actually enjoy it a lot more um when i was in studio i felt like i felt like a lot of my time was just like drifting by me i wasn't doing what i liked even though i was there's something weird there like i just was not super fit for that i find i thrive a lot more in the freelance world than anything but it is a hundred percent down to who you are like do you thrive off of you know a structured environment where other people are pushing you forward or do you thrive where people you feel like less micromanaged because you can kind of do stuff on your own away from people you know there are huge downsides to being freelance for example um you know you don't see people anymore it really sucks though when your entire uh, social life is the studio, but for an artist, it can be really, really hard to avoid that. For me, I have a very, very, very small social life. Very small. I do not have a ton of friends. Um, I don't see a lot of people. The pandemic happening right now, it's, you know, it's, it is what it is. Like, makes it even harder, but at the same time, you know, health is very important. So, there's that aspect of it as well that needs to be considered and it really just like what makes you happy a lot of it will be trial and error for people too and if i were to say that um, my career growth has been exponential being freelance for some people it might be the complete opposite for example when i i, I went to um I went to Mexico like years ago to do a uh, talk at Drawbreak, which was super, super cool. And I felt super lucky to be there as well. Um, but I learned, I learned a big culture difference between just what it's like up here in Canada and even in the US compared to Mexico um, in, how, in order to like get a job. A lot of people in Mexico, because there's not like a lot of studios down there, they start with freelance and so there's this idea that if you start with freelance you're actually like you're just trying to get your foot in the door to get a studio job right whereas for me it was the other way around and a lot of other people that are working in studio in like us and canada a lot of people say like oh maybe i'll quit and start doing my own thing or be you know freelance or something like i don't want to do studio anymore it's kind of an interesting inverse that happens as well so it depends on your situation too right um so i'm giving that kind of like annoying response of like it depends
went from office in home chair doing your thing yeah like uh it, it is it's a very different thing like if you don't have a lot of studios around you then it's usually the inverse from what i experienced yeah i agree i agree i 100 percent agree with the artistic freedom so here's another thing too that i've noticed and you know this is just a observation that i made this is not fact or anything like that People are a spectrum, it's wonderful, but I find that there are different types of artists who get into the industry. There are some people that want to um, be a little bit more free, want to have their own input, and do have this sort of like overall artistic vision for something, whereas other people get into modeling, for example. Um, and I'm not saying like all modelers, I'm saying like I left being a character modeler uh, at a studio behind because I kind of had like that, like, well, I like to do illustration and concept and stuff like that and just like, you know, go a little bit more wild with less of a box. But some people treat it more like it's a, uh, uh, a what, what's the word? Like as if you're like a carpenter, right? Like you're doing woodworking or something like that. Like there's a myth mythology, mythology to it. You have, well, even woodworking can be very creative. It's not that you're not creative. It's more of like, um, like a craft craftsmanship. Yes. You're, it's more of like craftsmanship versus like a, like out of the box sort of like artisticness. I, I don't know. Yes. Methodical versus um somebody who's a little bit more like throw paint at the wall right <laughs> and i would say like personally the reason why i enjoy freelance a lot more is because i have i feel like i have more freedom in that regard yes tons of revisions come through um all the time but i don't feel like it's uh i'm also not in the pipeline as much uh, being biz dev right so for me, it's a little bit different. But if you're more of somebody who wants to work within the pipeline and have that mythology, methol, 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 methodical, methodical approach to things, then you'll fit right in and you'll be great creative addition to, um, you'll be a great creative addition to the pipeline, right? For me though, if there was something about it that I just wasn't feeling fulfilling and I feel more fulfilled doing things outside of the pipeline before beforehand you know and you'll find yourself too the more that you do you'll find you'll find what it is exactly um that you like like you know and that's why i recommend to people like if you're gonna be a character artist right um you're you're gonna okay what's going on here move 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 no no just that thank you <laughs> um if you're gonna be a character artist i would recommend initially starting off by trying everything within the pipeline and see if you gravitate to anything because you might say that you want to be a character artist but you might actually enjoy something else within the pipeline or maybe you might not like it at all right so it's good to kind of do a broad stroke over the whole pipeline with an asset to figure out what it is that you want to specialize in than just leaving it and being like, oh, uh, you know, it's it looks like a lot of people get attention for doing anime models, so all I want to do is anime models. You might be missing out on something completely super, super awesome, you know, like not, not just anime models, but like just anime sculpting or whatever, right? Maybe that's something that you just want to do only, but you haven't tried the rest of the pipeline. You might be missing out on something completely, like, mind-blowing that you had no idea about. What's up, Bacon? It's been a while. Okay. 
go with this, but yeah, whatever. We'll just go with that, and then I'll adjust it if I want. I think after. No, I don't like this. These are Z-spheres, by the way, if you did not know. Z-spheres are a great way to do things like uh, wings and hands and things that have little bits coming off of them that uh, normally you might have an issue with just stretching stuff apart. This is a great way to do that. Because then you can just afterwards um, take it and... Uh, Yeah, you can take it afterwards and um, turn it into geometry and use that geometry to then sculpt on top of it and it's fun and easy and you'll see I'm going to do it right now. So you make adaptive and then we'll just do append right on over here. Uh, bada bing bada boom, mirroring weld, got base works and wings and you can just start sculpting on top of this as well. I personally don't like to make them Dynamesh. I like having um, it low res. I like doing everything low res initially because then you have more control over everything to get the shape that you want. You don't have to, you don't have to smooth like a freak. You don't have to be like going over it 100 million times. All right. All right, let's put it below. Ian, is that you tagging me? Is that you tagging me in the... Who's doing the, the max on Pixlogic stuff? I'm just getting tagged. <laughs> Having you're also making wings from Z spheres at the same time. Hell yeah. It's the best. It's one of the best ways to make them. Um, Other, like, you know, if you're doing like... Feather. Actually, oh, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, I'm gonna do some feathers with my masking technique because I find it's really fun. But yeah, it's one of the best ways to do, easiest ways to control to do wings like this. I have looked into Houdini. It is definitely not something that I will be into because um, it's very, like I was saying before, like the procedural nature of it. It's like, you know, it's... Call me old school. I like to I like to just sketch stuff, you know? I don't know. ADHD. Um, coffee as well, right? It's a, yeah, a little bit of a, a trademark. So if you can follow the conversations that I'm having, then you're like, um, you're like nine head. So congratulations on your ability. I would recommend for fun listening to Michael Pavlovich's tutorials on uh, 2x speed and you'll you'll have a even better time. Uh ba ba ba. Pinewood Studios, Disney, Marvel, and Lucas insist you work on on site in the studio. What even in the pandemic right now? I think that that's like completely irresponsible. I mean, the government isn't backing up anything, which is not, you know, like uphold the status quo. Am I right? Am I right? I'm sorry, leftist rambles, but for real. <laughs> I don't know, like, why Why is, like, saying COVID now such a, like, I find, like, a lot of people find it's, like, a boogeyman. Like, they're like, no, that which shan't be named, it does not exist anymore. Like, yeah, it still exists, and yeah, people are getting infected like crazy, and no. ECR tests aren't available to people on, uh, on demand anymore, so it's kind of like, eh. How are you supposed to get an accurate representation of how many cases are going? <laughs> All right. Suit yourself. I don't think forcing people back into the studio right now is the move, man. I just don't. I think that's like, I think that's so wrong. Um. 
like if people want to go back you know and they know what's going on then all the power to them i guess but i do not i do not i do not agree at all you don't want that <laughs> everybody's <t> <laughs> Damn, you guys really gonna go on that? All right. All right. I mean, this is not my channel. This is ZBrush, but I'd be ripping into you if uh, if I had the opportunity. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do a little back hump. the feathers yeah i'm gonna do them probably incorporated with the uh the wing itself yeah but you see what i mean it's a boogeyman <gasps> shan't be named All right, let's see. Isn't this already 2x speed? No, I'm working like a snail right now. Yo, what's up, Valentine? How are you? May you know why the head is not dynamished at this stage? Or is it early? Yeah, it's early. It's low poly. So like, I just kind of like stretch things. Yeah, I just stretch things around. Um, and then use the artifacts that are created from stretching like low poly to actually kind of create some sort of like a sketchy base. I'll definitely be be dynameshing it in a bit and like working off of that. But right now I'm just kind of uh, doing everything else, like doing the block in the best that I can. Oh, also, if you don't know, um, what I keep using is AccuCurve. So in the brush menu in um, down under Curve, if you click on AccuCurve while you have like Sneakagon or you have Move Tool, it will bring everything to a point, right? Which actually kind of helps in creating like some fun silhouettes because then you can get like stronger breaks and things. If you don't have that on, you know, it doesn't come to as sharp as a point, right? So I use that a lot of the time, especially, um, I actually use that a lot too if I'm doing like hard surface stuff, like moving stuff in hard, like hard surface. Z remesher or dynamesh? Z re well, it depends on like what are you trying to achieve. Dynamesh is great for sketching because you don't have to worry about topology. But the uh, the the Z remesh is actually really good after the, you're done your sketching and you want to reproject your details of dynamesh onto a cleaner topology base, right? So if you do a duplicate of let's say I had dynameshed this and all of these details I wanted to keep from dynamesh, which was like two million polys, then I would duplicate it, create a Z remeshed version of it, subdivide it a few times, and then reproject the details of the dynameshed one onto the Z remeshed um sculpt model and from there you can actually do like that entire process of high to low baking right which is good for a lot of different pipelines that's the difference is like z remesher i mean you can use z remesher too if you want to do sketching it's just um you have to be more aware of like the topology that you're doing like you're using whereas dynamesh is just like just go at it right 
Does AI already taken jobs in 3D related jobs? I have no idea if it's already taken jobs, but it's definitely like it's it's definitely going to make it harder for a lot of artists to be appreciated. One, and it'll also be harder for artists to um, keep their own work for themselves. A lot of people will uh, be you know, not really seeing a point in hiring artists if they can just type that artist's name in and use their style to create whatever it is that they want, right? So I have strong opinions against AI art, personally. Um, it's not a lack of uh, understanding technology or even agreeing with it, you know? Like, it's just sort of a... Uh, understanding where it's going and it's not is not fun is you know a few years out in my opinion not because already artists have to kind of fight to maintain rights for a lot of things that they do so and already too like art is very misunderstood in the general sense of like even what you do in the industry like have you ever tried telling your relative like what it is that you do Right? Have you ever tried telling your relative what it is that you do? And they're like, oh, you're just like an animator that works. You're just an animator. But like, maybe you don't animate. But that's all they understand is like, you, you're you an animator. And you tell them, oh, well, I actually use the computer to do this. And then it's just like, really? What? I can't. It's just a computer then. Are you really an artist? You know? And so AI art, if it's accessible to everybody, you know, that's even less appreciation. Right? So... Not saying like everything is about appreciation, but it's also about like if you have low appreciation, then what are, what are your chances as an artist to get hired for just like regular smaller jobs as well? Like they'll, they probably won't. So for like magazines and things like that, um, you can already expect that, uh, you know, they won't hire like an illustrator or anything of that nature unless it's a very, very big, important thing. In which case they'll just use like an AI generated image to fill the gap. I mean, Alibaba um, is already like AliExpress rather is already doing that stuff. It's already creating AI generated banners, and it is just as effective as any person, like any designer, creating a web banner. The AI generated banners for advertisements online are just as effective in terms of like the clicks that they get. So why would they hire a person? It's the same thing for AI art in general. It's just going to push um, creativity backwards from individual people in the industry. So it's sort of like a corporate thing, right? Um, so if you if you think about it that way, it's like how do you how do you view entertainment as a whole? Like the entertainment industry, is it more uh, corporate, you know, and I see it going more corporate in terms of that, right? Uh, in that route, but there is still, there's going to be a select few people that are still going to be, you know, artists and creatives that will be hired, but a lot of it will be like, use AI to do things. So for a lot of people, especially somebody like me, that takes away a lot of the journey, a lot of the exploration that is fun for it. And yes, I have used AI personally, but I find it kind of boring if I'm being honest. Um, because I'm not the one kind of getting there. The journey is like half of it for me. And people who do not understand that would, it, it's hard, it's a hard sell to make them understand that too, if they're not artists themselves. So there's already, there's that too. So I'm not like, I'm not like excited about it, you know, <laughs> but I am aware of it. Okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Wow, I really woke up today and was just like, you know what? Opinions. Yeah, I wanted it to be kind of like bird-like, so the chocobo thing I can see. I want it to have uh, more... More like, I don't know, kind of uh, gargoyle-y as well. 
I feel like I've done one that's kind of like this before, so try to make it a little bit more interesting. I feel like they, oh my god, man. Uh, I am not keeping up with chat. You guys are talking a lot. I love you for it, but dang. All right, I'm going to scroll up a minute and just see uh, what's going on. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> trying to get used to know when to dynamesh and then subdivide or how much do i need in the topology it depends on what you're doing if you're not able to get enough so if you're dynameshing and you find that you're working at like 5 million, your computer is like chugging, you don't want to keep dynameshing at that high resolution, but you can't seem to get the detail that you need, it's probably because um, you need a good like base. Like that means that you're on like a stage of like, like detail, like, you know, skin pore detail and stuff like that. In which case I would recommend doing uh, subdivisions so that you have a clean base, like a like Z remesh and then subdivide a whole bunch so that you have that clean base to work off of instead of just, you know, the Dynamesh nasties um, that happen, which I love the nasties, by the way, but it's not good for really small detailing. Uh... Well, the thing is, like, you'll understand that AI will go for things that are easily grabbed, like, open, like, if there's a lot of information out there, like, the whole reason why art is one of those, like, the first things that were, will be replaced, well, art, right? Like, it really, I could get into, like, this entire philosophical thing about, like, what is art and everything, um, and that sort of separates, like, the two thought processes of, like, you know, if you're more corporate about this, you're probably going to embrace uh, AI, right? But if you're less corporate, there's a good chance you're not. So it really just depends on how you're looking at it. For me, I find that it's kind of... It kind of sucks, <laughs> if I'm being real, um, but it is what it is. It's just, it's going for art first out of everything because there's so many images out there. There's like a wealth of stuff to pull from. I mean, there's no real way to stop people from like taking artists' artwork at this point, which is really frustrating, right? Like there's no real way to say like, hey, like stop, like, training your AI on my images, I don't consent to that. And a lot of like people would be like, well, you're ridiculous, like stop gatekeeping art. And it's just like, that's not gatekeeping art. Anybody can hold a pencil and do this. You're just trying to give people access to other people's work, which is, you know, like you, you can think like, you know, what's ease of access and this can just keep going and going and going. But because there's so many images out there, that's why AI is going for it, right? So if you're saying that AI will be good at topology, the first thing, probably not. It's probably gonna go for sculpture, right? And like Dynamesh kind of um, interpreted, it's already doing that, honestly. It's already taking images and creating it into 3D, like half 3D uh, images, which then go and they're using it in like augmented reality and things like that. So there's already, I'm already seeing like pipelines of people taking images and turning it into 3D, not proper topology, but that's what, that's the first thing that's going to happen um, for sure. So, woo! Commercial VFX studio and clients have already started using AI to make concept art. I don't, I don't doubt that at all. Concept art is using AI art to come up with the foundation ideas. That that makes sense. Hey, what's up, Bobbles? Sorry, I'm still scrolling up. You guys are talking so much. No, I'm not calling for any witch hunt. Do not hunt people. What the heck? No. <laughs> Somehow you can't paint from spotlight texture onto the mesh. You don't know what I'm doing wrong. So if you have... Um, if you have spotlight up, like, like if you bring an image in, uh, let's just like say this thing, we'll put it on spotlight, right? So this is what you're talking about. So you can't seem to 
project this. Is that what you're saying? You're having a hard time projecting this. Make sure that the, like you click Z, right? So you don't have the wheel on. Go into your paint or you know your standard brush with only RGB enabled, and then it should project. Uh, it should project right onto your mesh like that, right? So you can like kind of put it wherever you want, uh, and then kind of do whatever you need to in that area. It's one sub tool, but that's that's uh, that's what you can do with that. And if it's not working, then maybe in your brush menu you have disabled by accident um, auto masking. Is it? Uh, no, where is it? Where is it? Surface. Wait. I do this by muscle memory. Brush. Samples. Um, did you click on spotlight projection right here? If this is turned off, then you will not be able to project from spotlight any textures, any polypaint data, whatever. So just make sure that you have that uh, enabled. And if you don't want spotlight, if you just want it as a reference, then disable spotlight projection. Otherwise, your brushes will not work um, while you have spotlight active. Okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, hey, Masta. It's gonna be a mess for lawyers and copyright too. AI doesn't care about IP. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, I'm expecting some law lawsuits to start popping up at some point, honestly, because the way that um, AI so far, from what I understand from the papers that I was looking at, is it's creating artwork like kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, like just an overly complex jigsaw puzzle. Well, they'll take they'll take the uh, you know image one, an image two, a noise filter will be put over top of it, and then it will take from that that basically like that noise that happens, and then put those noises together with a it's an overly complex way of saying like jigsaw puzzles being put together right um so it's sort of like this weird like it depends on even your morals of like you know what is copyright the the, the whole legal thing is gonna have like a field day with it yeah i mean yeah of course ai is a hot topic <laughs> it, it's threatening the 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 core of what Art. It's making a lot of people question what is art, I think. That's the big thing. And I think that's a good thing. I think people questioning and kind of revisiting values of what art is and what it means to people and what it means to be creative is a really good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's like the silver lining for all of this is people are asking a lot of questions and looking within themselves and things like that. One thing though that does suck is I am hearing about students being discouraged um, from joining the industry, right? Because they're like, oh my gosh, like why am I even going to school if AI art is just gonna be a thing? And I think that that really sucks because I don't, like if you genuinely enjoy doing art, like don't worry about that in my opinion like i'm not worried i'm not worried it just like it just kind of sucks knowing that if maybe you might have to pay the bills doing something a little less creative than it might feel like today right it's like going doing something from scratch or not you'll probably not have to do a lot of thinking from scratch as much with ai All right, let's see. Uh, is studying anatomy compulsory to learn the designing in a more efficient way? Assassins, uh, yes, but it also, I think when it comes to animation and making appealing characters and things like that, I would focus strictly on um, proportion and gesture rather than understanding where things insert and all of that right off the bat and each individual muscle. Look at overall proportion of everything, measure overall proportions and work on your gesture and movement and you'll find that the other stuff you can layer on top of that afterwards. It's sort of like a, a good way to approach a more organic way of learning about anatomy because when somebody says um, you need to know anatomy to get in any part of uh, art, in, including stylized stuff, it is true to an extent. You do not need to be 
doctor level at anatomy and know the names of every single muscle in order to be good at a lot of stuff. It's only if you wanted to do hyper real that you need a lot more of that knowledge, right? But overall, I would say gesture is your big one in proportion. But absolutely reference real people. Do you use the same matte cap for all your sculpts or do you switch depending on the project? Let's say, example, you want to see um, highlights clear. Yeah, so depending on what it is that I'm doing, I will switch uh, matte caps, especially when it comes to um, giving a, uh, a, a character turnaround or something like that. A lot of the time I'll just like, I'll use skin shade four. So my big ones are like, I'll just use skin shade four or um, just like a base with all the poly, poly paint data on top of it. I'll use this matte cap right here, the matte cap gray, to show off the base um, without any uh, poly paint data. And then for something like the eye or anything like that, that needs just a little like hit of like shine, I will use um, toy, toy plastic. I won't use RGB levels. I'll use toy plastic for like the eyes or something. But a lot of the time, Personally, like I've just gotten into the habit of painting in that information and painting in um, eye hits, like uh, light hits instead, just for concept purposes. I find that it's more predictable because in animation, a lot of the time you have a light that is usually that that is hooked up to the rig for eye pings, right? So wherever the character is looking, you always have that little twinkle in their eye. There's always a light hooked up to almost always a light hooked up to that right so i just kind of like put it there um skynet no Yo, what's up diego oh jeez please do not with the andrew tate nonsense honestly which screen tablet i am using a wacom into a or no i'm not wacom Cintiq 22 HD. Oh, that's what I'm using. Wacom Cintiq 22 HD. Um, Agape, you can change your UI in uh, the preferences menu. There is a lot of things that you can do to change it to suit yourself. Uh, there's a lot of button customization in the interface. There's different colors you can make things as well And you can save all of this stuff off as long as as well as like dragging different buttons around to make your your um, Workspace as friendly to you as you possibly can me I like it very minimalistic So I just got my Dynamesh up here my mirror and weld and then all my brushes are mapped to um, the one through zero hotkeys on my keyboard because that's all I really need But if you need more than that and you're going into menus a lot then perhaps you want to put those Specific things like right up like, you know up on your top bar or your bottom bar or something. So it's easily accessible What am I making a dragon? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, I agree drummer about the UBI thing like, I, uh, I mean, I'm not, it's so annoying, right? Because intrinsically speaking, like politics is tied to art. It always has been, it's always been a thing, but here I don't think is the right place. Like if I were on my own channel, I'd start screaming about it, but I'll just be like, yeah, agree, keep going. <laughs> Oh, I'm not trying to move you guys away from the AI things. I'm just like trying to offer <laughs> I'm trying to offer the other people that aren't talking about that like answers cuz they were asking questions. But if you want to keep talking about AI, like feel free. I don't I really don't care. Um you already know like I don't I'm not like a huge fan of it. How much experience do you have in designing? Um well, I ah, that's kind of a vague question. Like I've been, I guess, like professionally, I've been a designer for a few years, but I mean, I've been doing like my own thing for a little bit, but I just like, I guess it really just depends. This industry, I think I've been in the industry for only like six or seven years, probably seven years. 
I started as a character artist, which honestly, like as much as when I started, I was a junior, I thought I was doing a lot of design work. I thought I was like the shit, you know, I was like, oh man, we are much I'm doing. This production would be nothing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Never thought it like to that extreme, but you know, and then actually, you know, doing design work and how much thought you actually have to put into everything. It's a, uh, there is a, a new level of appreciation for like concept artists and stuff. That's why like, I, I kind of feel bad. Like, you know, if I see 3d artists, like kind of giving concept, like certain concept artists, like a hard time about like not making something like a one to like one to one turnaround for them as if like, that's like their main job. Like it's really not. Like, there's a lot of problem solving as well, and drawing, like, constantly drawing is, like, pretty rough. It's pretty rough. So, like, as a character artist, part of your job is to do a little bit of the design work that isn't done in 2D, if that is the pipeline that you're in. Because design in production, I find too, is just, it's a rolling, it's a rolling uh, target. It'll constantly be changing. And to put all of that on like, you know, one, one part of the pipeline is a little rough. All right, let me, and then I'll try to mesh this after. Yeah, there's a few ways that I do wings. I just wanted to do it this way because I already had the the square down. I'm sure like people watching this too, I apologize if it's frustrating to watch and you just want to see like process. I talk a lot in my lives. Um, so if you want, again, I'm just going to say this again, like if, if you want like somebody who's a lot more like tutorial focused, um, there's a lot of other people on this channel that are a lot more tutorial focused even ian 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 does a lot of like uh tutorial like streams like he's very very beginner friendly very very good about um walking you through a lot of stuff there's also um michael pavlovich as well Maybe obvious, but if you can't put the details on the mesh, what can I do? You tried to make the mesh smaller, but the geometry is still visible. You don't know what to do. Um, the geometry is still visible. Like what? Like if you zoom in like this, I mean, no matter no matter what, like as as long as you keep zooming in, you will find the geometry to be visible. It. Because like there is no like you know specific like like smoothing on this. Um, you could always try subdividing if you Z remeshed what it is that you're doing. Control D, you'll have a subdivision level. You can find your subdivisions in Geometry tab right here. Different subdivision levels, right? So this is subdivision one, and you can see it goes higher. So here, look, right, and then subdivide it. It creates everything into four squares, so it adds more geometry. That's why like DynaMesh is better for when you're um, first starting something out, I'm just using this right now and just 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 because it's, it's easy in this particular situation. And you're gonna find that too, like different different things are different are, are easier in different situations. My best thing, my best piece of advice is to just go at it and try. Yeah, there you go. Ian's got gotcha. you. Ian's got Ian's got a good good stream. Got a very good stream. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily recommend this way um, for making wing membranes and things like that to a lot of uh, people, especially if you're new, because like the navigation might drive you a little bonkers um, if you're new to 3D. And this is a lot of like understanding like 3D space is sort of like a second hand to me now. So I don't really care if I'm just going to like duplicate something, move it around. I don't really care. Like it's fast enough because it's familiar enough with me. Um, but if you're new and you want something a little less intimidating to make a wing membrane with, 
Another way that you can do it is there is a tool in the brush menu, um, <laughs> Curve Quad Fill, will give you more of an exact, uh, an exact shape if you want that. And then all you would have to do after that is rotate it from that point, right? And then you can find the average there. But now you know that that's like, like the shape that you're looking for. And then you can start to like move it around, you know, instead of like taking a nasty piece of geometry like I am. <gasps> it's gone. The wing is gone. No. Good thing I still have my Z-spheres. I'll just recreate it. Here we go, make adaptive, and append, <laughs> bye. Yeah, so be careful too when you're doing doing that kind of stuff. Um, if you're using the curve quad fill, it does it in the same sub tool. So make sure that you don't click delete um, without removing anything <laughs> you you do subdivide when you go to use slasher it looks as if it was not subdi subdivided enough specific okay well if you're using slash like let's take this right this is 500 right if i use damien standard it looks like this right 500,000 active points might not be enough to get the detail that you want it really depends on what it is that you're doing. So I can subdivide that and again. Now it looks like this. Again, you're still gonna be able to see the geometry if they're that close. But if you're viewing it from here, it's totally fine. If I subdivide it again, eight million, right? You can still see it if you zoom in really close, but if you're out here, you're fine. So again, it really just depends on what it is that you're doing right because you're always going to be able to see the geometry depending on how close it is that you are um if you want clean topology though i really do recommend z remeshing working on the subdivisions and if you still need more if you still need more geometry after that you can look up um what's it called uh geometry hd right here i rarely use this feature this is for really high-end vfx level like uh, skin details and things like that um i think jason hill goes into it on one of his videos on his youtube channel if you're interested go look up jason hill he might talk about uh, hd geometry there's also a bunch of demos that pixelogic themselves have done um, well, Mac, Mac, Pixon, Max, Maxon, ZBrush, Maxon, whatever. <laughs> so HD geometry would probably be your best bet, though I don't, I don't even use that. So Right. Yeah, that's right. I was gonna maybe all this.
Okay. Let's do. No, 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 no. Push those two, and then you can mirror note that. If I wanted to do an overarching change, can yeah, probably like just mirror these two things together, merge them together rather. So I don't really like the shapes. It's a bad shape. Yo, what's up, Max? I'm doing good. I went on a good rant. People have been probably downvote the video. Sorry, Ian and others for that. Can't help myself. Speak my mind. <laughs> it's time to stretch. Ooh, yeah, in a half an hour. In case you could still see it from a distance because it happened to me many times and if you do something very big like a creature or something else how do you manage all the geometry of the divided pieces because you got to the point where you were where the program was crashing how much geometry okay well you're you're going a little overboard then because unless like you have an app you're working on like a microwave or something i you know zbrush can run on literal potatoes okay maybe not literal potatoes but you know you know what i mean like it runs on a lot of things so if you have like maybe like two gigs of ram you're gonna have a problem but at least 16 gigs of ram you should be good um honestly uh if you're still seeing geometry from far away like is is this because like do you have like let's say a piece like this big right this big i'm just gonna take this ex as an example this one this middle piece this little ball this rib cage if you have that at like two million and you're putting down skin details and from like this distance, are you still seeing like heavy geometry? I'm not sure there might be some like weird thing going on there. Um, maybe you have an active normal map. Maybe you have an act like some sort of like texture map is active. Um, maybe there is some sort of a like maybe the mesh itself needs cleanup like Maybe there's something wrong with the geometry. You could do a fix mesh down in the geometry tab. If you're using Dynamesh and you're still having like really big artifacting happening. I have not run into that problem specifically. Usually I can get enough detail in when it's like, you know, subdivided a few times. Uh, which software is better and easier for retopology? It comes down to the person and what you prefer. You can do retopology in ZBrush. Um, you can do retopology in a lot of things. A lot of the simple stuff that I need to do, I literally will just use ZBrush now. But um, some people prefer using Maya. I used to use Maya a lot. Some people use the dreaded B word, Blender. <laughs> no hate on Blender, though. Honestly, like it's a it's a good free software, and people shouldn't be like saying, "Yeah, but it's better than ZBrush," or "ZBrush isn't as good as Blender," or blah blah blah. Because like it's it's different things. It's like, are you gonna use a Swiss Army knife in order to build a house? You could. You could use a Swiss Army knife to build a house. Or you could use a specialized power drill, right? It's the difference between a specialized program like ZBrush, which is for sculpting, and a 3D suite. Also, Blender is free, so if you don't have access to, um, you don't have access to 
you know, a whole bunch of money for different 3D suites and different 3D packages, then, like, there's nothing wrong with using Blender at all. But to say that it's better is a, a bit of a stretch, in my opinion. Really comes down to personal preference, though. So if you are having all the luck you need within something like Blender, then power to you. But most artists in this industry are going to need to use a ZBrush if you want to be serious about it and actually get like an industry job. It's sort of like the standard. It really is the standard, not sort of. <laughs> This one, I'm just going to inflate it a little bit just to make sure we've got enough uh, info right here. Try to mesh that. Probably too high res. And lower the resolution. Half that should be good. No, even lower. Go to like 16. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll just work from there. Get it in there. Get her in there. Get her done. Oh, I love triggering you guys. Wow. <laughs> Damn. We've got some good conversations tonight, huh? <laughs> oh, is that to come in dead early in the morning to the schools to get your homework done? Dude, I don't know how you do that. I always, like, stayed up super late. Yeah, student, so Maxon gives like their whole one package um, free for students, which is uh, very useful if you want to learn stuff. Very, very useful. Honestly, hot take, hot take. I feel like every, every, like, every 3D package should have a free student version. <laughs> like, like why gatekeep your, your software for, uh, for people who want to learn and then use it later on, I don't. It only makes sense. Um, no good for the 3D suite like Maxon that actually offers that. Uh, try, and, try to see and solve looking at these things. Yeah, no, no, you're not any trouble, no spam at all. I just wish that I could like help you further because I'm not 100% sure what you mean. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of giving you what it is that I usually see. Sorry if that's not helpful. Am I able to go to preference performance like to see you max threads since your viewport is so smooth? Dude, I am using a Ryzen 9 right now. Um, 3900 series, so not the most recent one, but uh, I've got like 64 gigs of RAM too. You want preferences, you want, you want, pre wait, oh frig, where did this go? Preferences, performance, you want performance. Uh, where's my performance? I never look at this. Max size is only 23. Multi draw. Woo! Thanks, John. I gotta like actually focus. All I've been doing is talking. It's a hot take because anything you say on the internet is a hot take, Master. There's always gonna be somebody who's just like, what? How dare you? <laughs> Yo, what's up, Rethorn? Rethorn, sorry, my bad. You didn't have the luxury? Yeah, that's fair. Did have to rent a laptop from the school? I couldn't rent a laptop. I was in the studio. I didn't have internet for a lot of uh, one part of my college, so I was always in the studio. But um, they'd lock the studio, but I was still- I would just like hide. I would stay in the studio, and then when the janitor wasn't there, I would just come out and keep working. <laughs> Because I didn't have- I didn't- I didn't have uh, internet at, at home for a little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I needed like I needed to watch tutorials to learn how to do ZBrush and stuff. Uh Yo, okay, honestly though, for real, like if you're paying, like, I would pay like what, 40 grand for my college tuition? Like, you're gonna let me stay in the studio past 11 p.m., I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am sorry. You have a hot take about other business model things, but you'll keep that to yourself right here on the YouTube. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> Who is- What's wrong with socialist? Why are you spamming socialist? What's wrong with socialism? Okay. Yeah, I wanna like really make this neck longer and stuff. I'm gonna probably throw this into um transpose. Don't like the jaw here. This is kind of a weird shape. <laughs> Dude, I know, I know. If you if you say if you say socialism, the triggering begins. <laughs> oh my god. You've seen the birth of the universe? Wait, okay. Alright. Nah, this, this like, uh, honestly, Pixlogic masks on, like, these guys are pretty cool for letting me just, like, say, like, I'm, I'm allowed to have my opinions. It's rare in these, in these days, you know? Rare to have your own opinions.
Animal Farm Kids? Was that? Eh, stop. Thank you. I'm just gonna break that because as much as like I like the uh, the straight rounding, I also like to break it a little bit. It kind of gives a little bit of an interest in terms of the uh, the shape, but it still maintains that round. Uh, okay. All right, I'm gonna save this. Um, and I save this. Let's go art. Uh, do I have enough space? Oh my gosh, the amount of times that I have to change my drives. <laughs> so much, so much sculpting. Okay. Save that here. Do I have space? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> Socialist AI driven 3D package boards? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, I have I have a whole thing like it's so funny, right? Because the way that AI would really work is if Oh my god, that's like that's too much. I'm gonna trigger chat too much. I can't talk about this. AI and socialism. I can't. I can't. I'm gonna trigger people. I can't do this. Alright. Uh, it ranges from like just a couple megabytes all the way to like seven, eight gigs. It really depends. It really just depends. Alright, I, I, what I was gonna do is go into T posts. And I'm gonna do a little bit of um, pull. So it, now that I'm in T pose, you can see everything is like one sub tool. So now I can just kind of do overarching changes um, to the to the the model as a whole, the sculpt as a whole, and make it more um, dynamic. And also, you can grab, you know, this stuff like I was showing you at the very beginning. And grab my lasso. Damn, have I ever told you guys that I really love streaming? I love talking to you. I love I love you I love I love it. I love it. <laughs> Genuinely, I'm not being sarcastic. So much fun. Especially when people get mad. <laughs> A little bit toxic. You would go wider? I kind of want to keep it a little slim. Like, I, I do want the bone structure there, but I kind of want to play around with, like, the the overall wings coming backwards a bit, but, like, over top. You know? Over. Whoa! See that? Oh, by the way, that happens sometimes if you've got it like directly like dead straight in the middle and then you do something sy symmetrical, it might like screw up because it can't figure out uh, what side you want it on. What side you want to pull from? So that's what that was. It's the uh, symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> Assassin, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Oops. Just friends. What the hell? 
fellas, is it weird? Is it weird to enjoy the company of um, a girl streaming? Is it? Are you automatically a simp if you watch a girl, <laughs> fellas? <laughs> Three more. I know. I know. Okay. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. You know the answer is to just stream more. I get it. I know. Um, but then what do I do with myself when I've got a whole bunch of work to do, right? You tell me. What do I do? Not do the work, right? See, I'd have to be patient enough that we could, like, we could all just, like, stream together. Just, like, hang out enough that I actually do get simps. <laughs> oh, kidding. And then, and then we actually can, you know, say screw work, a whole new stream. <laughs> Who the heck is simping? Sorry, fellas, it's weird. You're, you're, uh, you're hanging out with a girl online. Sorry, fellas, you're automatically a simp. I don't make the rules. Um... ZBrush reaction videos of other people. <laughs> I should do that. I should do that. That would be hilarious. I bring up Ian's stream and I just react to him the entire time Ian is like doing doing ZBrush. I'm just in the corner, like talking over Ian, doing his like regular stream, being like, what is he doing now? <laughs> like eating food while watching Ian. <laughs> Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> uh. <laughs> you're, lear you're learning the program here? Okay, so if you're new to everything, um, I'd recommend checking out some of the other streamers on ZBrush Live as well. This is sort of like a study hangout. I'll answer questions, but also talk about really like weird stuff like for four hours. <laughs> So, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask, but there's a lot of resources with the other streamers and also ZBrush, uh, uh, Z Classroom, zclassroom.com is a good resource to learn. Here, check out Michael Pavlovich. And uh, check out Ian Robinson. Um, and they also do some, I think, well, actually, no, Ian said, like, every Wednesday. At, Ian's usually before my streams, actually. He's, like, right before my streams, so that's actually perfect. If you have, like, if you're, like, annoyed with me, then just, like, bump your schedule to, like, two hours before, um, I go live, and then you'll actually listen to somebody who's, like, teaching me things. <laughs> Latest uh, with licensing, do we need to go uh, on the month to month? I think, um, I think you can. S I thought you could still get. I'm not 100 percent sure. Ian, are you here? I don't know. He's sick. I shouldn't bug him. Um, I'm not on top of that. I have a perpetual license. Uh, so last I heard was if you wanted updates past the version like 2022.05 that you will need to pay but i think you can still do like annual um subscriptions i don't think you need to do month to month all right uh Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna try and get a so front wise. This is not so bad, but I'm going to hold that up. There we go. More gargoyle. Get the rib cage going here. 
Ooh, somebody is cooking something so good in the neighborhood right now. I can smell it through my window. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna dynamash this. And all that juicy information is going to be there. Like this. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. We get some cheekbone. Yes, sir. And then I'll work off of that, so then we can go T plus to sub T. Go. Save as. Where's my thingamajiggies? Where'd I save this? Uh. No. Okay. Think. Okay, bye, Bobbles. Yeah, Gargoyle. Yeah, I'm gonna put a tail. Um, why is retopology important? Can you make semi-realistic character without retopo? You can always sculpt something and take that sculpt as far as you can, but it is not a usable um, pipeline model, so it cannot really be efficiently rigged and animated and textured if you do not retopologize. You can do all of those things with a sculpt, but it is not industry standard and it actually bogs down the pipeline and makes it very hard to get proper deformation, etc. So um, what you want to do is retopologize in order to make it friendly for animators and riggers. Yeah. Hey Link, what's up? But the active points, the total points that you have see, see now are right. I cannot think with that little geometry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's usually, yeah. Most of the geometry is with this right here. This uh, wing, because it's uh, uh, Z remesh, or because uh, it's uh, diameshed, but everything will start going up higher. I mean, that's the thing. Like, when you're working, like, really low res, like, then you can just, like, worry about um, the overall shape of stuff. You don't have to worry about if it's uh, topologically sound or anything um, and you don't have to worry about details as well oh. a pubic bone
Who is gonna dynamesh this? Right, 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 right. Quick, save before I dynamesh. Sa oh, save before you do dynameshes on things like stretch geo like this, by the way, because you uh, you might bog your computer down. You don't know if something is a little bit too much for it to handle, but it, to me, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so just save, just in case. So now you can see all of that artifacting becomes like sort of like a base to start doing like some fun sketch details and stuff. That's why I do that because like I don't care. I'll just go on top of it anyways and I treat it sort of like, you know, you're going over top of uh you're going over top of your pencil work in a sketchbook, right? Yeah, my puppo is behind me. Yeah, you can make realistic characters without retopo, but it's not going to be like, um, it's not going to be usable in production. Like, if you want to get into this industry, don't skimp on learning how to retopologize. Don't. I know what I said at the beginning of this stream, but also please keep in mind, like, I knew the basics. I just didn't know enough. And I got very lucky, okay? I got very lucky to just be in the right place at the right time and learn on the job. It's not the case for everyone. So please just do yourself a favor and learn the, like, basics of retopology. Understand edge flow and why it's necessary. You're always messed up with the retop. I have, well, you know, practice makes perfect. But, you know, what is perfect? Especially when it comes to retopo, it's just like, just know the basics and you're good.
get chat in a second and then I'll take a break. So this is like the feather part where I just kind of take my mask and just let it like be really messy and kind of all over the place in the areas that I want to have the, uh, the feathers. Again, this is like a sketchy method of doing this because um, I don't really care about the uh, I don't care about the topology, this is literally just something that I would paint over anyways. I expect someday someone will feed enough good Rutaco into some machine learning. Uh, yeah. If anything, if we could just like, you know, get the, uh, if we could just get AI to replace like Retop work instead of the art itself, that would be, that would be kind of sick. Not AI art, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, let's see, let's see. Perfect retop tool, we won't actually need to do manual retop. I hope so. I hate retopology. I mean, I don't hate it, it's just boring. So I can do goddamn big eyebrows. You tired sitting that long? Yeah, I gotta get up and stretch. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and take a break, and then I will come back and, uh, and continue sculpting. A uh, dragon type thing. You know what? Whoopee. There we go. I am going to BRB. Let's see here. BRB. Okay. I'll be right back. And, uh,. And then we'll continue for another two hours, okay?
Did you really just say enjoy that poo, homie? <laughs> Look guys, it's Monty. You haven't seen Monty in a little bit. He's super triggered because somebody is like making noise outside that's freaking him out. And he just will not stop barking when he's in the main area. God, I wish you guys could hear how much he barks. He is so chill on stream. Look at this. He's a potato sack when I'm holding him. And then I put him down in the main, in the main part of the house. And he just loses his mind. He loses his mind. He's constant supervision. Constant mental stimulation. Oh no, scary. <laughs> He is a good boy, but he is, um, he needs a lot of mental stimulation in order to get tired so he doesn't constantly bark at nothing. Hey, uh, Nashali, loving your work. Thank you so much. Tips for newbies. That really depends. What are you looking for exactly? Um, that's such a, like, broad thing that it's hard for me to just give. Like, you want me to pull a tip out of, like, the, the, the hat of tips? I guess, uh, don't stop doing what you love. Inspirational quotes. Really just depends. Like, what, what are you looking for? I'll, I can do my best to answer whatever you have, uh, as a question. In the giant hamster wheel. No, man. Physical? So, you know what's interesting with, uh, with dogs is, honestly, you, they'll, they'll be a lot more tired out. Um, if you give them a slow, like, walk where they're just allowed to, like, sniff literally everything and you kind of play, like, a puzzle game with them or whatever, they'll be, like, they'll be pretty good mentally. More so than if you just, like, let them, like, run like crazy in a field. They'll stay tired for longer. Thanks, Fabled. Look at this, look at this, like, look at this, look at this boy! Up, yeah, he's pretty hefty. He's a good, like, uh, 30 pounds. Almost 30 pounds, something like that. He's a chunky boy. He's very thick. Well, thick porgy. Big loaf. Just wanna squish! Okay. Here we go. Boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> okay. Back to work. Work, 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 work. <sighs> Let's see. Get rid of the BRB.
A Kong? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a, an entire slew of Kongs. Um, he's very picky, though. So if I fill the Kong with just his pate, then uh, he'll go through that very, very quickly. It won't last like 10 minutes. So you freeze them. But because it's frozen, he's like, that's too much effort, actually. So I'm just going to let it sit there, wait till it thaws, and then I'll eat it. And it's just like, what's the point then? You're you're annoying. You're annoying. You've solved, you've broken the code. Tomorrow is your last day of studying video game uh, production for a for-profit school in the mile end. They tell us there's a lot of jobs when you graduate, although one of your teachers mentioned the opposite. What's my take? Um, a for-profit, I mean, most schools are for-profit. Studying video game production. I mean, so the thing is when you're going to school for art, right? Like there are, there's no guarantee that just like going to school for art is going to get you a job. In fact, it's like completely up to what you do with your own portfolio that will help you get a job and also just kind of putting yourself in places that help you get lucky. Um, there are a good amount of jobs out there, especially in, um, you know, games, but it depends on what, like, what aspect of games do you want to get into? Like, do you want to be a character artist? You want to be a character artist that's sort of like what everybody wants to do so your your competition's higher you want to be a technical animator though like you know you'll have a better time um not having to like fight as much for positions so it kind of like anything it depends but i wouldn't rely on the school to get you a job you know Unfortunately, like as much like as money as you spend with schools, it's like when it comes to art, it's so it's so weird. The bachelor, if you're getting a bachelor's, that's good for getting a visa. Um, the networking that you can do at school, like let's say maybe your other friends that you went to school with end up getting jobs. There's a potential for you to get a foot in with that way, right? But just the school alone giving you... Um, a guarantee for a job afterwards is is very unlikely. Monty, Monty, my dog? Yeah, he's a corgi. He's a corgi and his mom ran out of printer ink. His head is all without like any of the color. Uh, lower. Number um one in this one, I think. I also merge that. Okay, we'll do a dime mesh on these guys. Lay down. Lay down. You're fine. I promise you're fine.
tightness in muscles. Any tips you can give for newbies? I would love to give you a tip if you were more specific. Like, what do you want to know? Like, uh, ask like a chef, like any, any tips for new cooks? Yeah, don't leave the burner on, I guess, when you leave it alone. Like, it's such a broad thing, you know? What are you looking for? I'll be able to uh, give you tips in that department. the all-knowing no actually very far from um but you know what i try my best where i can give uh info to give info and if i cannot then well that's like a whole other thing right if i can't then uh, i'll do my best to find a resource for you to help out The answer is 42. Oh man, Hitchhiker's Guide is good. Best tips you can give in general is pick something you want to do. But yeah, like we've repeated that mantra like what like a hundred times already in our stream. It's like that. Yeah, like general advice is just like make sure that you enjoy what it is that you like to do. Um, because if you don't, you're gonna you're gonna really start to hate art. Create a field is not a field to be in if you really don't like it. You don't like the uh, the part of the job that you're getting into. The the field rather. You better like what you're doing. You're gonna do a whole lot of it. like the insert here. Mm. Yeah. 
here. Because we're knowing some anatomy, because I'm making this pretty, like, human-based. Um, it's kind of, like, gargoyle-y. So knowing, like, you know, that basic sort of anatomy helps you... Okay, well, that's where, like, the hip would be. That's where, like, the insert to, like, the, uh, great trochanter. So helpful. This would be... Sacrum. Uh, she works on a model like it's a real shape. You cannot see time that I rotate the model. Turn the model smooth? You mean rotating them? Okay, what are you guys talking about? How do you turn the model smooth like this? Is it with your other hand? Um, yeah, so you can actually use right click um, with your with your pen. I think you can change that. Let me see. Where is it? Is it in interface? No. Is the but I'll find it. Or somebody will tell me before I remember where it is. Uh, not 3D. Well, if you have a 3D mouse, then it definitely will be smooth. But I personally don't like using 3D mouse. Um, where is it? Do you guys know where right click is? Oh. Yo. Am I like. Am I going crazy? It is in here. Without your space mouse? Yeah. I'm trying to remember where is right click. Right click. Enable right click. Config? No. Quick info. I'm just gonna go down and find it. It's not there. Interface? No, it's not there. C. Click. No. One of these. Navigation. Navigation. Right here. Na right click navigation. Um, preferences, navigation, right click navigation. In orders, it, it basically enables you to, um, with your uh, pen, there's a button here and you hold right click as right click and then you can just start moving that around. And then my other hand is on my keyboard, which I just hold alt and start moving around. That's what I do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Is it necessary to learn all the names of all the muscles and bones to get no like i said earlier in the stream you're um well i mean like if you're doing stylized stuff it's not necessary but if you're doing more realistic stuff then it's absolutely necessary um when you're first starting out i i really really recommend that you focus more on gesture and making sure that you have your proportions in check instead of hyper focusing on all of the little muscle inserts and everything like that, because then you end up getting these sort of like um, a crochet models rather than naturalistic looking models. I find it's a little bit better to layer your knowledge that way. So if you get good at the general silhouette of like what a human should look like generally, then you can start layering your knowledge and be like, oh, well, the reason why the bicep has a curve here or like, you know, the arm has a curve here and then it's more straight on the other side is actually because of the more complicated muscle groups. Now I understand. And then you can start building that information on top of itself and knowledge on top of itself rather than overwhelming yourself as a beginner with all of this stuff and it's really hard for you to really pick up on what it is that you actually even see i find 
you know, when you just get right into learning anatomy without actually jumping into anything more proportional and like gestural, right? If you're jumping into like uh, a crochets immediately, you it, it sort of overshadows everything that you do and you don't focus on like structurally and like um, artistically what you see. So there's a difference between like anatomy that you would see like medical anatomy and artistic anatomy. So with artistic anatomy, you want to be focusing on simplification first, which then can kind of, you can layer that knowledge in afterwards, in my opinion. And this is a very subjective thing. It really depends on how you learn as well. If you're not like me in that sense, it might be distracting to do that and you might be more confused. So you need to understand yourself as well and how you learn to figure out what's the best approach there. Um, you can try a bunch of different people's ways of doing it. Personally, I do it as I need it. I don't look at the, like, every single muscle overall and be like, well, uh, I need to memorize everything because in, for me, that's a waste of time. I work stylized a lot of the time. Um, so it's more of like, what's the basics? And then I can build up off of there. And for anything really complex, like, uh, if I needed to do something more, like, like straight up human anatomy with um, like very clear muscles, I will just grab reference and refresh that way instead of making sure I memorized everything. Uh, it's too much, it's too much, it's so much. Some people specialize specifically in anatomy and just knowing what everything looks like exactly in different positions and everything. I'm not that person. <laughs> I get by as as I need it, right? Yeah, if you're communicating, knowing the basics is good, but I also just kind of like don't know the names of everything as well, and uh, and it, it, it is very difficult to teach that way, right? Because then, you know, if you're looking up references for something, you're like, well, the squiggly do is not an actual name for something, right? So I acknowledge that that is very frustrating. Um, if you're listening to me and you're trying to figure out what it is that I'm doing and I'm like, well, you know, the the doohickey over here and you're like, well, what's the name of that thing so that I can go and look it up, you know? Like, I, I understand that frustration as well, but I'm doing my best, but that's not really like my, my main thing. I'm not an anatomy expert, you know what I mean? Like, I know what I need to know and I'll just keep learning, and I think the rest of my life I'll keep learning too. It's like a never-ending process with anatomy, um, just because like you, you have to you have to pick and choose your battles as well. You need to know enough to make convincing uh, sculpts that you know look sound. Because like if you look, like, even if you're not like a really good artist, you can still look at some somebody's model who didn't do a lot of work on anatomy, doesn't really understand anatomy, and you'd still be like, that looks off. I'm not 100% sure why, but it looks off. And my opinion is if you can at least get to the point where people are like, you know what, yeah, like overall, like that, that's looking, that's looking pretty legit, then you're in a good spot. You know, if people need to like nitpick, then in my opinion, like you're in a pretty good spot. You're obviously never going to stop learning, but if your overall, um, crits are on very small things where like you know like small like oh well actually in that position that muscle might not look like that if that's sort of like the crits that you're getting then you're probably in a good like a good spot um to build up your knowledge from there but if you are getting critique like hey your proportions are off like hey the legs shouldn't be that small hey i don't think that the shoulders should be out that far um you're pro you probably need to start from square one and work on your overall proportions and understand that and the overall like underlying basic structure uh, and something that I would recommend too is uh, anatomy for sculptors they do get pretty intense there is like a lot of a crochet stuff and it goes into movement and things like that but there are overall exercises involved with that book too to just make you focus on um, just the proportions just the overall shape and then build from there
the thing that I actually really want to finish that I just like haven't gotten around to finishing <clears throat> is my Attack on Titan sculpt that I started. Um, I need to like flesh out his anatomy a little bit more and uh, and then pose him. Just haven't like gotten around to it. I've been like so busy. I can show you where he's at though. My Aaron Jaeger. Hey, okay, let's save this. Yeah, 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 I'll open it. Here, I gotta get rid of this stuff though. It's a little hefty. Ah, let's delete this. It's like loaded up. Where are you at? Oh, that's like taking. I gotta delete some of these files. That's like so much. 16A, I think so. Any tips for sculpting? Yeah, I like everything I just said, Lao Lao. Um, and look up anatomy for sculptors. Like focus on like your your underlying structure, your basic shapes first. Is this is this the right one or is this the earlier one? Uh, that's sixteen. Wait, like I don't know which one it is that I last worked on. Let me sit. just give me a sec. What's up? Is this the most recent or is this one? I can't remember. There was like a tweak that I did. I think it might- I don't really remember. What? Yeah, they're kind of the same, really. Whatever. Yeah. This is uh, where I got to with him so far, so... Still has like a lot of work to do. Obviously we've got some like balloon, like it's a little too balloony. I want to like rework a lot of this stuff, but um, yeah, just some basic, basic things going on here. I didn't even finish with his hand. You see, like I, I just kind of got a little bored with all the, the detailing and stuff. The feetsies, the feetsies. Look at that booty. Yeah, I don't really know um, exactly how I'm going to pose him, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. See, I, I, I'm thinking, like, I might want to, like, open his, like, a like a roar and, like, do some, like, crazy hair stuff, but I'm not 100% sure right now. And his eyes, actually... Probably can't see it in this one. No, this is all messed up. Eh, whatever. I'll get around to finishing it eventually, but... Erin Jaeger! He's a big boy. Mm, perspective. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's still got like a lot of anatomy work to do, like finessing and stuff like that, but everything's in the place where I want it to be. I gotta like just work on a little bit of like the balloon shape that some of this has. Um, I think that's what like some of this tweaking was. If this was like the most recent one, I don't know. I'll have to look at it more. I think it was just a peck change. I think I liked that more, like the peck coming down felt a little bit better, but like this needs. Anyways, like, yeah, it needs a little bit of work. Um, whatever. Wee. Maybe, maybe, maybe if I stop being so dang busy, I can get to him. Man, I have so many things on the list of stuff that I want to do. Like, I've got like this this whole like list. I call it Ash's magic list of doing because if there is a you know a chance where. Uh, I don't have any work. I have a hard time just sitting down and not getting overwhelmed by all of the stuff that I have on my plate. So I just like, I have like this, this, uh, this notepad that I can just like refer to and just pick something, you know?
Oh god, and then there's also the uh, the Elden Ring art that I had started and just like did not continue at all, which really sucks because it was getting somewhere. And it's imposed too, so. Uh. I have so much fan art on the go. <laughs> Merci, Ryan. How are you doing horsetail for the 3D print? How am I doing horsetail? I'm not doing any 3D printing. The guy with the slurpee? No. No, I can show you the Elden Ring thing. Okay, right, let's see. Ooh, where is it? Am I working for someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, right now I'm doing a lot of stuff for Spin Master. And... Okay, so this doesn't have like the other stuff. Uh, wait, let me see if I can get. See if I can get the. That's it. And then I've got like the armor that I was doing, and then I was just gonna like replace it. Yeah, so this is like just the the armor I started like fleshing out for the the, the black knife. Assassin, because I love the Black Knight Assassin. She uh, she was doing things to me, you know. You know what I mean. Um, so I was just gonna like just do it on sort of like just like a static thing, and then take all the parts and just kind of like put it there. Because like this is a lot. It's a lot to do, but I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. It's just sort of the gesture is here, right? Gesture is here. Um, more of like a classical kind of approach to things. It's hard to see with like the material right now, but hopefully you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah, this 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 is so much fun. I love doing this. With the chisel brush. Oh, so much fun. I could do this for like hours, just making like little design patterns and stuff like that on like armor and stuff. Do it for hours. Made a bunch of like scale IMMs for um, for the armor too. Again, I could do that for hours. It's very like mesmerizing putting all of this kind of stuff together. But this, actually moving it into place onto my mannequin that I made, I don't know, man. It's gonna take a long time. Less patience for that. All right, back to business. Back to dragon. I don't make things for games, actually. <laughs> I work in animation. Um, a lot of kid stuff. <sighs> Can you make video how to create socks and four block molds for- wait, what? You want to create socks and the molds for socks. I am not a 3D print person. Um, lots of other people on this channel are, so they might be able to help you out but I am not I'm not somebody who makes a bunch of like figures for a living Could you please tell me uh which pen display yes I am using a Cintiq 22 HD Wacom Cintiq 22 HD first start with an IMM foot yeah industry standard IMM foot actually let's use the IMM foot here let's do this where's the body parts uh IMM body hell yeah let's put it let's put the foot in do it. Oh, torso! Blasphemy! Foot! Yes! 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 Look at that. <laughs> did I learn- what did I learn myself? Uh, ZBrush? Or- or what? 
What graphics card uh, am I using? I'm using an RTX 2070. Because Lord knows your girl wasn't able to get on the uh, wasn't able to get on the 3090 train while crypto was going absolutely bonkers. Thank you so much. But it does just fine, especially like because I don't do a lot of real time stuff, so I don't do a lot of real time. I don't need like a crazy graphics card, but you know, what is what yucks? You're doing a lot of real time stuff, though. You're gonna want to get as best of a graphics card as you can have. It'd be cool to be able to uh, dual um, 3090s, though. I'm sure, like, key shot would be a breeze. Real time key shot. Oh, you never. Man. Industry standard foot IMM. Create all of your wildest dreams. Two. Ten eighty is solid though. Like the ten eighty Ti is like, it honestly is a pretty much a powerhouse. But yeah, you're you're gonna want to upgrade at some point, especially if you're like doing stuff real time. Nice, Thomas. Lucky ducky. Did I sculpting a thing like that and how do you- yeah, yeah. I mean, like, myself being- if I needed help with something, I would Google it, right? And then there's always people on- online, on YouTube, everywhere, doing tutorials for literally everything. I mean, ZBrush has a section called Ask ZBrush. Ian is in charge of it now. It was Joseph Dress before. And they've got, like, a whole bunch of- videos on just like questions that they see online that they answer in video format so if you have a question with zbrush if you if you type it in google if you know how to google you'll be able to find it like it's so if that's what you call self-taught then yeah i'm self-taught i'm internet taught self self-searched i think is the better term because you know i didn't just open zbrush and just mess around with it and learn it like that. I mean, to an extent, yes, but if I ever got stuck on something, you know, I didn't know what the heck, like, remember at uh, the very, very beginning of things, I was like, well, what the heck is a low to high workflow? I don't know what any of this is. What is baking? How is it, how does like baking have anything to do with 3D, right? So all of that, it's like, you you Google it and then you find out. That's, that's how I learned. <laughs> You're gonna have to start with the I am on foot and make the whole thing, fine, fine, bet. Bet next time. Next stream. Bet. It'll be in September. Come into the schoolyard. Remind me. Great card. It's time to upgrade. Yeah, man. Oh, nice. You've got a good CPU then. Yeah, I've got the uh, 3900, which is still holding up, but for rendering times compared to like, comparatively to like everyone else, it's starting to show its bum bum. But it does it does the trick. Like I don't need to worry about too much. But when I start using, um, I start using like a whole bunch of uh, like reflective materials, translucent materials, etc. Oof. 
we go screech mode. That's okay. We just paint on top of that anyways. Just paint on top of everything. My answer. Paint. Paint it. It's fine. Didn't have time to uh, texture model, but it's okay. Paint it real quick. <laughs> So many, so many emails I send, I'm just like, hey, here's the rough, don't worry, I'm just gonna paint on top of this. Hey, here's the rough, uh, just so you know where I'm at. You got any composition changes you want? Nah? Okay, I'm just gonna paint on top of this. <laughs> yeah, cool, 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 cool. That's all we want, final image. I was going down memory lane the other day, like looking at like a bunch of stuff that I did while I was in college. Kind of, it's honestly kind of nuts. Like it doesn't even feel like it was that far away, but in terms of like work and everything, like it absolutely was. And God, I just feel like time is going by so quickly. It's just like such a trip though. Like when you start looking at stuff from like long ago, like where you were at and then you compare to like what you can do now and it's just like bro why were you even sad like just keep working you're gonna get there don't be sad i was so depressed about so much stuff that i honestly like now that it it, it gives like good insight right because like um when i was like in college and stuff i would get so depressed if something of mine didn't look good, and I know that's like super relatable. But now it's like, because of so many years of experience of like, just being able to look back on where you were to where you are now, that sort of confidence, there's a confidence there of like, there's no point in being sad, just keep working on stuff that you like doing and you'll look back and you'll be already like so much better. So like, don't worry about the sad, just keep working. Whereas before I would just get like, I, I feel like I would just get paralyzed by it. Um, I think I've been working with ZBrush for like eight years. Let's see. I think started in 2013. So eight and a half years almost nine years then something like that 2013 i think so yeah yeah 2013 eight and a half years um because it was in the december that i really picked it up i think we'll just go with nine years we'll just go with that Did you render inside ZBrush or other software you've seen people using? So yeah, I, I use Keyshot for rendering. What's up, Rita? How are you doing? Do I have any training videos? I actually sort of do. Um, nothing of my own per se, but stuff that I uh, did on... So I've got a whole slew of videos like this, obviously, but then let's see, the um what's it called what's it called what's it called the top tips zbrush top tips Woo! sorry that was really loud there's this one that i did on the hair stuff so there you go and i've also got um something on wings what sorry my bad uh here you go so that was some top tips that i did that i done did hmm. Ah, uh, drink water. Oh, 
old videos on this channel. Man, don't tell me how cringe I am. I can't watch myself. I cannot watch myself. I can't do it. I'll leave that to you. If you enjoy it, then that's all that matters. <laughs> I'm sure when I was younger, I, I said like some cringe things that I probably disagree with now. But that's on growth. And experience. It's crazy too, because like, I've been streaming with Pixelogic for a very long time now, like four years, I think. Which is absolutely uh, nuts. I can't believe it's been that long. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. I enjoy, I enjoy it too. Great. Um, just for funsies. Wait, I did say. Wait, hold on. So that I wanted to do some like feather stuff in here. Um. Okay. Too high res. Ooh. Also, another thing too you'll notice um, watching me work, I apologize if it's frustrating, is I will absolutely jump um, from part to part. Like, I, I, I'm not very methodic about how I approach this stuff, I just kind of go based on vibes. Just like do a quick uh, eyeball thing here so we can go ahead and grab our toy plastic, go MRGB fill with the white, and then we can go over to the cap and switch to paint. Give it a few sub Ds. And then, actually, this and do a quick fill. Go. References? Uh, yeah, it's all from imagination. Just have fun here, kind of sketching whatever. Side at the front. Thank you. 
You have a standing desk. Um, you're sitting for a long time, which is bad. Yeah, I know. I, it is really bad. I usually get up and walk around a lot. No, I don't have a standing desk. Um, for me, sitting is actually because of the way that I sit and I do like calf pumps and stuff. It's actually not too, too bad. And I do get up and walk around. But I find that if I stand for long periods of time because of the type of legs that I have, unfortunately, I've got some issues personally. Uh, it, the pressure that builds up in my veins is actually worse than sitting. Um, I've got some, a little bit of that uh, vein disease. So I get, I gotta get some vein remove, veins removed here and there, uh, every now and then. <laughs> Otherwise, it starts to hurt my legs. Got that vein disease. <laughs> Standing desk isn't like in general better for your health it's just it encourages you to you know stand but even if you're standing in one place not moving for a long period of time that pressure that you're putting on your legs as well um impacts you too especially if you have uh not the greatest circulation to begin with um so it's like it's important to like use your muscles not just stand but like use your muscles right oi what's up oi Oh, yo, the latest season of The Boys was so good, though. Anytime I hear oi, I just, I think of Butcher. I've never seen something as shocking as the, uh, as season three, episode one of The Boys, though. On TV. Stiff standing is a form of torture. I can imagine. Hung by strings like a MoMA mobile, no leg issues, you become interesting to look at. <laughs> there you go, perfect. Yeah, I, yeah, I wear compression socks, like a grandma. I find it's interesting though, like not a lot of people talk about um, vein disease, but a lot of people have it, it's just, you don't really like hear about it that much, but yeah. Not super serious, unless like you leave it untreated, in which case then like you're gonna have all kinds of issues with your legs. Gotta get that you gotta get them squigglies removed, you know? Yeah, it's taxi diseases. <laughs> oh my god. Whatever, dude. What do honestly like, I know you're being sarcastic, but like what like I hate that so much. Sexy disease. Oh my god. Like, oh my god. Oh my god, we can just feel bad for them because like we can't see it, right? Like it's not something visible, so um just feel bad for the person instead of being like, ew. Why don't we just accept that people have things about them? Everybody's got something, man. Uh, oh, stretchy. Thank you. Yes. Expressive eyes. Very fun. Oh, you're perfect. Congratulations.
<laughs> yeah, if you don't have something wrong with you, you're 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 weird. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he is looking pretty. It's it's because of the eyes, right? Like, if you turn if I turn that off, well, no, it still looks pretty general. It's because of the eyebrows. Um, we gotta we gotta give him like a little bit more uh, chest. Big boy, just a little. Some, some more, some more to go off of here. Hmm. Still be thinner, actually. In this part to be thicker. That'll make more sense. And it actually, hmm. ah, bleh. I hate when I do that. Focal shift zero. There we go. With doing the rule three on the neck, I guess subconsciously, right? I guess. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, one, two, three, yeah. I do a lot of um I, I do a lot of these things subconsciously though. It's sort of one of those like you, you gravitate towards things that just like start to look better. And it's only after when you analyze it that you realize why you did that, or if you need to include something else or change something. Um, it's it's actually like it's something that I tell uh, people to do a lot is don't just do something really quick and then submit that like wait a little bit um, walk away from it for a bit and then look at it again uh, like the following day or within a few hours so that you can kind of give it like with fresh eyes so you can give it a better perspective and then you can analyze your own work um, as well and see what it is intuitively that you did or what you would like to add. And that makes you a better artist. It improves your eye. So. Yeah, no worries, Thomas. Have a great evening. Antiviral, where the height of Sheik was to get infected by disease. <sighs> ah! <laughs> yeah, man, I... Alright. I do everything I can to not be sick. Personally. <laughs> I don't want to be sick. I don't like being sick. Sick, being sick sucks. There's nothing glamorous about being sick or cool about being sick. Nothing. But if it's like a like a Hollywood 
kind of like making fun of movie, then I completely understand it. <laughs> if it's for animation, should you not isolate eyes and then draw on it? Um, I mean, like you can make actual eyeballs. I just like, I just draw, like I just paint like my stuff, right? Like it's just something that I do. Uh, you don't have to at all. I'm going to give this one another Dynamash though. Where do I want that? Maybe I can just do a... Yeah, I can work off of this, is it fine? Since we don't have a lot of time, I'll just kind of focus on the, the eye area and like the face. We can get some cool stuff going. So here, care for step down here. That can blur out the mask a little bit. And this area, we'll grab the eyeball and this here. I need to pull that out and push this back in. Wait. Yep. Pull that part of the eye out because it's, it's looking a little odd. Is this O song? Many O's is giving me anxiety. Thank you. 
Um, you're, it's easy to learn ZBrush to get professional in it. Ah, fair. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, if, 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 if you put time into anything, time and effort into anything, you know, you can get good at it, but it's just, it doesn't interest you enough to do that, right? If it doesn't, you don't have to feel bad about that. There might be something else that might grab your interest more. Uh, no worries. All right. Good night, uh, Surya. Have a great evening. It is not easy. I can do this last bit. What we're gonna do? How do you deal with the angle issue when moving mesh with snake hook brush? You're sculpting a white stag and you just encourage this camel anger constraint movement of the brush. Um, the angle issue when moving the mesh. I am not sure about an issue. It, uh, I mean, it kind of like, it goes in whatever direction you're facing. Like in the sense of, um, Like if, if I were to pull something out, you know, like the plane, right? Like it'll just like pull in the direction that I'm pulling in. It's it's sort of like, I, 
I don't really know how to describe this, but when you start understanding 3D space more and you get more comfortable with it, you don't mind just kind of like pulling out into 3D space and getting used to like rotating around to see exactly where it is and orienting yourself. Um, I think there is a way to use it based on normals. I'm just not 100% sure what that is. Maybe it's like... I mean, you can hold shift to get a straight line when you pull. But I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah. Sculptress Pro with the snake hook. Uh, I'm not like a huge fan of Sculptress Pro. I like things to be... Uh, unless I'm doing like... Details inside of like finger areas and stuff. Not really use it too much. So we got half an hour, okay. It really isn't. It, it can be a lot like cleaner. I just, this is sort of like my fun way of sketching and doing scales because, like, you could do like more realistic scales and stuff like that with like alphas and whatnot. But 
I like to just have fun and zone out and start doing like little squigglies and stuff like that, you know? And then if you want anything to pop, I mean, you could always like make a morph target beforehand, but for me, I like to use if I can find it, which I always like, I've used this a hundred thousand times. There it is. Contrast Delta. Basically, it just like, it will just like kind of put a, a like a contrast over top of everything that you've already done like you know you don't have to go over it but it's the same sort of thing like if you don't have um a morph target you can just kind of like go over top of your um details that you did and make them pop more so i like to do that just for kind of like uh, just getting in there you know Oh, I appreciate it, Brandon. Appreciate it. Honestly, if this helps people, then that's like, that's the biggest reason why I do it. Like, selfishly, I really enjoy talking to people and streaming, but otherwise, like, I'm just happy that it helps people. So your girl doesn't have a social life, so... You make sure we're working in world size that is a question that i would uh ask ian um or shane olson i am not 100 percent sure you could always like you can always look at uh what's it called i think there's like scale master stuff here i don't usually use this personally but you could look into this because then you could, like, you know, unify everything it looks like to be, you know, centimeters, millimeters, whatever, and then that will make sure that your model is in the size that you want it to be, right? But I'm not exactly 100% sure how to use this, because I don't use it very often. I think the last time I used it was, like, a year ago, so... Yeah, Shane has a measuring stick, which is good. Um, and there is, like, I think something in the light box that you can find. I just personally don't use that, so I can't be super helpful. Apart from alphas, what's another way to make good scales? You could do it by hand, the way that I'm doing it. You could do it with masking. Um, you could even do projection, so let's say you had a texture already made, uh, you could literally open Spotlight and then project it onto your model. 
with a morph target applied so you can just add and remove areas and make them blend so so that's what i got for you I have my RGB up, you know, I do. Let's hold on. There we go. You missed a bit? Ah, yeah. The feathers, yeah, I literally did the same thing, right? Right there, um, with these quills. It's, uh, so I'll, I'll do some more as well. Yeah, it was the same thing that I did for my, um, Eye of Tomorrow piece that I did. Uh, so here, I'll show you. Quick. So, this one. If you look at this one. Um, you can see a lot of like the feather stuff. Wait, can I full screen this? So a lot of these feathers in here, like all of this feather stuff, it's the same masking and pull technique that I do. And then I'll just paint, like I'll paint over top of uh, shoot. Where is the bottom? <gasps> the the struggle of having like other um, 2K monitors and then the Cintiq is like lower res. <laughs> but yeah, like you can see like the... Uh, here we go again. Grr! Hold on. Let me fix this. There we go. Yeah. So all of these feathers, it's a, a base all of this is like a 3D base that I just paint on top of to make it look a little bit more fluffy, but it's just that idea of um, quick masking, pull it, and then make the world your oyster, right? So uh, you can use it for illustration. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So it's not for, um, obviously this is not for production, but you can see like the little like masking that I do here, and then I'll like create little irregularities so I just have like broken up mask I create some kind of like a small pattern like that and I take snake hook back to caravan and pull easy But keep in mind, this is a messy way of doing things. You cannot chain, turn this into something that you would use in a production model. You would have to create like, um, you'd have to create like hair cards or something of the like to represent this in a usable format because this is very crunchy geometry. It's not really like ideal. It's just for concepting. It's just for illustration purposes. Like. Don't try and do anything extra with it, you know? Yeah, of course, no problem. No problem. Here for.
Yeah, I haven't I haven't watched Game of Thrones uh, the new season yet. Um, I don't know. I'm just waiting for all of it to come out. And there's also the Lord of the Rings season uh, premiere, the new Amazon one. The latest like trailer that they put out, it's so weird, right? Because like the first one, the first trailer, I hated the first trailer, but the second trailer, I was like pretty down with. It's just the music is so jarring. Um, it does not feel like Lord of the Rings, but everything else looks really epic. And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm gonna give it a chance, but I kind of I'm, I'm worried. The new god is boring? You, really? You didn't like it? Mm -hmm. What course did I do? I went to school for 2D animation. To learn how to sculpt, um, I actually did that in at the same time as my uh, bachelor's for animation. I did it on my own time, so um, if I wasn't doing schoolwork, which I should have been, then I was doing ZBrush stuff. I was distracting myself from schoolwork with ZBrush. Like, this is cooler than um, drawing rotations. <laughs> How did you paint the iris circle? Uh, you can scroll backwards in the uh, in the VOD and you can see. It's pretty easy. It's just, uh, just a couple of colors with the paintbrush. How to sculpt near the folded area of the limbs, you always get it wrong. Like, you're having issues getting details in there, or are you having issues just like moving stuff around in general in that area? It, having issues like with folds, or like how folds work? Like, what's up?
I appreciate it, Hossein. Oh, is that how you say your name? Hossein? Hossein? I apologize. Uh, English is my only language, and I'm not even good at that, so... Um... You didn't use any helper brush to get the perfect circle? No. No, you just paint it. Yeah, I know, 2D animation, yeah. <laughs> It's token without t yeah. Some people are just gonna go into it like thinking like it's gonna be trash, but I'm 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 gonna give it a chance. If I'm not sold on like the first episode or even maybe the second episode, I'm just not gonna watch it. Like it's that easy for me. Like if I'm just eating dinner and might as well put it on. If it's good, then I'll give it like a go. If it's not good, then whatever. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste my time. What you did with the legs here looks really- oh, like movement. Okay, well, a lot of it, uh, you can just use a big Damien standard brush to get, like, these folds, right? Um, and what you want to do is make sure that you don't just, like, leave it like that. Afterwards, you sculpt on top with some clay buildup. Add, like, a bias, so a fold bias, right? So wherever your forms are coming out, like, if you were to fold your leg, you'll notice the uh, the calf muscle comes out more unless like you're super built on your quads it'll come out the side uh, a little bit more so you think you start thinking about like, like your biases um, in terms of like the folds that happen it's not a direct like uh, it's not like you just use your Damien standard then you just have that whoosh whoosh right here you want to start thinking of like okay well one side might um, have like a bias like this where it's a little bit more folded over right then you can smooth that out you can see how that in itself starts to look a lot more natural even right and then you can start you know going on top of that so instead of instead of just a straight like right you start thinking about like uh overlap and biases Man. Got some information available online. Yeah, it's an old version of it, but it should be on Gumroad. I don't know where my Gumroad is, though, to be honest. Like, I keep getting notifications of people who have downloaded something from my Gumroad, and I'm like, the only thing there is, like, a really old version of my UI, but it's super easy to just, like, mimic this, by the way. You can do it in your preferences um, with the, the colors. Right? You just change around your button colors and everything is pretty vanilla. I just moved a few buttons around. Like, I put Dynamesh up here and then I changed these over on the side. Like, the brush thing, um, you can always get, like, these things, these smaller ones. You can get from, like, Stroke, right? You just drag this one onto your reference or onto your UI instead of dragging this one. Um, same with the texture. You just drag this smaller one instead of the bigger one. Same with uh, the matte caps. So if you go to material, drag the smaller one, right? And then, uh, and then you're good. How do you handle the UVs with all those feathers? You don't. This is just a sculpt. It is nothing more and will be nothing more. You share your UI's colors in config? Yeah, it's like somewhere, I don't know. It's somewhere. It's, uh, yeah. But that's how you do it. It's not. It's not. It's not that complicated. I recommend like putting putting things that are good with your workflow on your UI as well. If you're just learning, you're just like right off, like right out the gate, starting ZBrush. Um, I really recommend you keep it vanilla so that you can follow tutorials a lot easier, right? Um, if you go like head first into somebody else's UI and they don't have an extensive extensive tutorial for you on the basics of ZBrush and stuff like that, you're probably going to be lost. So I would recommend you start off with vanilla ZBrush and just work off of that because there's a lot of tutorials out there that have that same UI. It makes it a lot easier for you to find what you're looking for and understand. Also, keep in mind that holding down control and then hovering over anything, almost anything, in ZBrush will give you a little tooltip explaining exactly what that is, which is incredibly helpful for understanding the program. Um, I didn't know this when I first started ZBrush. Oh my gosh, it would have helped so much, right? Like you can just like 
everything has its own little tooltip by holding control and oh, like hovering over stuff. That's it, it's it's very 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 um, extensive, and if you're still lost past that, you can always search up um, on Ask ZBrush, Z Classroom, and even the documentation has more information on all of this stuff as well. The vanilla UI is not more comfortable. It definitely isn't. I'm not going to pretend like the vanilla UI is great. The whole reason why you can change your UI around so drastically in ZBrush is because it's meant to be as friendly to each indiv individualized workflow as possible. Um, the vanilla UI is pretty like, oh, I got to go into this menu, this menu, this menu, this menu. But that's actually a good thing when you're first learning, in my opinion, because then you're going to know what it is that you need to know and where it is. So it's easier to look things up and Google it, right? You can't, like a lot of learning a new software, um, like ZBrush, is learning how to Google. That's like a huge skill. So doing everything in vanilla ZBrush actually help, kind of kind of helps that, you know? Uh, the amount of will you marry me's, it's very in- I, Maverick, whereabouts are you from? Out of curiosity. I'm just wondering. Maybe it's like a culture thing of like a nice- It's just a nice thing to say. I don't know. Very strange. Um, yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay. Mm. Oh, we only have like two more minutes. Okay, I'll just, uh... Put this guy. Let's see. I'm just assuming the best and assuming that it's like um it's a culture difference, you know. It happens more frequently than I think. This is a uh, shift S, by the way, to do this. Look at all the dragons on the screen. All right. All right, this is a uh, yeah. This is a uh, good good time to end. It's uh, 10 p.m. I'm gonna go and do my other stuff in life, including work that I need to catch up on. So, thank you guys so much for hanging out, and I will see you in the next one, which is going to be probably September 7th. I think. September 7, and then 14, 21, and 28. I am trying to stream more frequently. Again, hard for me to stay on top of these things with all of the busy, but I'm gonna try to. Um, yeah, if you want to try ZBrush, by the way, there is a free trial if you're interested in it. And I think um, there's a bunch of other announcements and updates on who's going live on this channel because again if i was annoying to you trust me like the other others that stream here are much more knowledgeable than me and they uh they aren't annoying to a lot of people so feel free to follow them and check out their streams as well the zbrush live crew has a ton uh, a ton ton of different artists from all different areas of the 3d world so check them out um, and I will see you on the next one. Yes. Okay. Bye.